did it. I yeah, have, how's it going? I'm doing well. Peace. You know that Instagram had did, you know, some update or whatever. So it just goes to show you how often I'm updating. I know. My devices. I don't update a whole lot, so. But here's the thing about it. Lorenz, it's not even your fault, though. Like, all of us had to go and update it. We found that out because it'll show you. It'll be like, you need to upgrade your system before <laughs> before you can go live. And it's like, oh, snap. You okay. want to do that right now? But so it's, it's definitely not your fault. And it's, it's, okay. it's all cool. good. You are oh. in here. Uh, yes. How are you today? I'm well. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm alive. I'm up. And uh, I feel like I'm, I'm blessed any day that I can get up and, uh, you know, try to uh, live out my life and my dreams. You know, no yeah. complaint for me. I'm truly, truly uh, grateful and thankful. How about you? How you doing? I'm good. It's good to see you. Um, yeah. It's definitely great to see you. I am also doing well, even on a gloomy, rainy day in Los Angeles, but I love it. We are um, healthy, good, and blessed over here. So, And I'm happy to be talking to you today. So I'm, I'm extra excited. No, this so. is a good time. For, you know, it's a good time, even though obviously we're still dealing with so much crazy stuff in the world. It yeah. is nice to be able to just kind of step away from that or as we are getting through it you know talk about yeah. uh, some beautiful things that's going on in our in our lives yeah well and you're absolutely right about that one of the beautiful things is season two of bronzeville congratulations yeah. about that thank you i gotta tell you lorenz i do want you to inform those of us who you know those who don't know about the the show the audio uh scripted show and but i have to tell you I've recently become a fan and I've I just sat there and I just listened to it all and I was like wait a minute was I just sleeping what's up I mean so I am yeah. definitely a fan but tell those of those people who don't know about Bronzeville the background um of the show and and of the place Bronzeville uh, I, I'm happy to do so I'm very excited to announce that we're launching a season two of the audio series Bronzeville uh season one did incredibly well it's uh available on all platforms, just so people um, understand what this is. It's an audio series. So we ask, what is an audio series? So let's get to the technical part. An audio yes. series, uh, essentially um, a scripted show that you listen to. But the way it is written, the way it is directed, the way it is performed with the actors, um, the sound design, it's almost like listening to your favorite show, your favorite drama. So imagine whatever favorite TV show that you binge watch. But let's say you're turning around, you're at your computer, this TV is on, so you hear it, right? We have created that. So you go right into the theater of the mind. And we were able to do so um, because of the platforms that we have today, with audio and podcast. And so Bronzeville is a story that my brothers and I, the Ronald Lamar, have been looking to do for so long, for years. Um, the story of, of, you know, essentially a community where Black people actually got a chance to see the American dream come to fruition. And what do we mean by that? Coming out of, you know, Jim Crow in the 19, you know, uh, early 1900s, the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, you know, Black folks just did not have things working in our favor, yeah. but we're able to overcome, a, you know, is all the adversity that we've overcome. And one of the um, ways we were able to do that is you find these communities like Bronzeville, which is on the south side of Chicago, predominantly black, that um, found ways to uh, financially become stable. And what black folks were doing was running numbers. It was a numbers game that was considered a racket. But the people who was at the top of these, um, this policy of running the numbers were pillars of the community. So even though they was running these numbers and making tons of, of, of bread, they was making a lot. When I say a lot of money, I'm talking about millions and millions of dollars. But what they would do was they would put that money back into the communities. You know, so they created a real financial infrastructure Right. So black folks, we own our own hospitals, department stores. Um, we were very much so self-sufficient like other groups, whether they were Italian communities, Irish, 
Jewish communities, they thrived and they didn't ask and didn't go with their hand out to nobody. They did for themselves. Well, that's what we did. You know, other communities started their financial infrastructure off bootlegging and, mm -hmm. you know, a whole lot of stuff that was racketeering. Ours was running numbers. Um, over a period of time, you know, other communities started running numbers and sort of taking over that racket. And then the government came in and took over. And it is what is today the Illinois State Lottery. It is what the lottery is. So Black folks have a lot to do with the whole numbers game and what has become the lottery that so many of us play today. But we don't get a chance to know about that and learn about that. And spending time with Quincy Jones, I was able to spend uh, uh, time with him when I was doing the movie Ray. Um, and we got a chance to just talk about everything. And he brought up the South Side of Chicago. He talked about, you know, the policy, his family, his father was a driver for this very um, influential family called the Jones Brothers, no relation. And, um, you know, he would always say, y'all got to do this story. You got This story has to be told. Um, but, you know, we look at, you know, Harlem and Tulsa, Oklahoma. Black folks found a way to make it. And what we wanted to do was remind people that we can. And if we continue to unite and find ways uh, and pathways to thrive and to aim higher, we actually can do it. And we don't always have to have our hands out, you know, uh, looking to other folks if we decide to have common agendas and common goals. And so the story of Bronzeville really, t you know, focuses on centers around a family. You know, there's, um, um, you know, two, there's two brothers, there's four, four, three brothers, yeah, three brothers and a sister. Mm -hmm. And they are the pillars of the community, you know? And so um, with all these great characters, we just wanted to tell the story of this family that's almost like what people would look at as like the Godfather, you know, how the mm -hmm. Godfather, they had, they had a real infrastructure, but our focus was not really on all of just the racketeering, it's about what they did yeah. for us to be able to thrive and to have our own schools, to have police departments that policed our communities. And, you know, we know with the, our relationship with the, with the police department in our communities now. But if we had black folks running and organizing and doing things for ourselves um, and thriving in the economic sector, you know, in a real way, uh, the, whole, the whole world would be much better, trust me. And so we wanted to do a story about that. And season one did incredibly well. Um, we have Lawrence Fishburne, who's a, a, a producing partner. He's a producer uh, along with my company, uh, my brother's Lorano Lamar. We also have an incredible cast with Tika Sumter. Um, Makai Pfeiffer is coming in this year. Uh, um, Kyla Pratt. Um, uh, we got uh, Layla Hathaway. There's a lot of great people. Yeah. Uh, Barton Fitzpatrick. There's a lot of great people that came in and showed some love with us, Harold Perrineau, um, LeVar Burton, uh, Obama. Apheon Crockett. A a Apheon, my man, Apheon. And Apheon, a lot of these people came from season one. So Apheon came back. Um, we got a lot of cool people and I'm excited about it. You know, I want to tell yeah. this show that black folks, we were doing a lot of great things and uh, we still can and we still should. Yeah. It, you know, and Lorenz, I'm so glad that you talked about that because, you know, even in the comments, people are just agreeing and rooting that on. And I think that there's like a this duality here because we understand it. We understand where we came from and what we have the power to do. But then mm -hmm. on the flip side, you know, you still in the south side of Chicago, you still have uh, yesterday, I believe there was just this mass shooting um, in Park Manor. It's, it's, it's disturbing yeah. the type of violence that's still going on in the South Side of Chicago. So I know this is entertainment, but it's really about um, educating and bringing this story alive and making people aware of where we came from. So what's the importance of that part of it, just getting it out there and reminding specifically the people who are in Chicago right now, listen, y'all, like y'all don't have to do this. Um, we're better than this, and this is where we came from. Is that still a connection for you? Absolutely. And, you know, when you hear those stories of mass shootings or or just the fact that um there's a lot of uh, violent 
uh, acts that are going on in our community amongst ourselves is heartbreaking. You know, it, you know, it never sits right with me. It should never sit right with you all. Um, and, and that's one of those things that we have to, you know, find some uh, accountability. But you also got to look a little deeper, you know, when people, why are they fighting? Why are they, why is there violence? Why is there this, um, this continuing uh, uh, dilemma that we're faced? And I think lack of resources has a lot to do with it. If you think about uh, on the South Side of Chicago, what economic infrastructure is there that really is in place for black folks to thrive from our school systems to um, health opportunities with food, the financial sector, do we, what, what, you know, we have a couple of black owned banks, uh, but not as many as we should. And, and also jobs and careers and things that really make a difference to a community. Because if you look across the tracks um, on the north side of Chicago, they ain't no better as people than we are, right. but they have different opportunities. And there, there's a different kind of uh, infrastructure, right? You think about, you know, on the south side of Chicago, places on the west side where I'm from, the west side of Chicago still. I mean, there's, you know, we still got what would be considered poverty stricken areas. But what is that? Because there's lack of resources. And when you have lack of resources, people do the things that, they need to do to survive, whether they, you know, you know, hustling or, you know, doing whatever, scheming, whatever they have to do. And what we're saying is if we can take that and, and flip it and do something, I think we would then see a decline in the, um, you know, some of the, the, the crime and the violence that we're, we're seeing. And it really has to look, we have to really look deeper, in my opinion. This is my opinion. From what I've seen, um, we got to find other opportunities and create other opportunities and pathways so that we don't continue to, you know, deal with, you know, um, violence as a, you know, as one of those things that we go to, you know, to survive. I think we, I know we can do better. I know we can, but, you know, um, it ain't all on us. A lot of stuff has been set up for us to, to fail as a group. Systematically, yeah. Systematically. Um, right, I definitely agree with it. Um, but you know what, you're doing your part and all of you, uh, Tate men, you know, all, all you brothers and Lawrence Fishburne, you are all doing your part in even yeah. telling stories like this because it is about making us aware. Those of us who didn't know about Bronzeville and places like that, that had existed in the past that we can get back to that and we can tell those stories remind our kids you know and, and pass it down i think that that um is one of the things so uh bravo to you um and you're right it is it's definitely one of those things you guys are well equipped with all the things to make it like your favorite show if you just weren't watching yeah. the television you it's know so it's, it's it, i don't mean because it's part of i i think it's part of also our, our duties as as artists um and creatives in the industry uh as entertainers just you know tr part of our duty is to tell the stories that aren't being t told in the way that we want to want to tell them and you know the podcast this audio series is unique because we actually went to um the original idea was going to be a movie or a television series but when Lawrence Fishburne's company and our, our company, we went to all the major networks. We went to everybody, you know, and we was like, listen, we want to do this great show about this family and people who came from the South and how they made it and they thrived. And yeah, there was some racketeering, there was some gangster stuff happening, absolutely. But the bigger picture was, you know, sustainability, that we ain't got to go and, you know, with our hands out to, and, and and, and when we went to these networks, I mean, we went to all the majors and they, they saw myself and Lawrence Fishburne come in. We had the writer, we had the directors, we had everything was set up and was going. Y'all, they loved the idea, but they said, um, we don't think that there's gonna be an audience for a story like this. It's a period piece. It takes place in the 1930s and the 40s. We're just not really sure, but we like, Boardwalk Empire is doing well and Peaky Blind, all these other shows are doing well. And they was they said in the 1800s or 1900s. What 
what's the what's the difference? And I and I said, well, I'll tell y'all what the biggest difference is. Black folks ain't running away from white people. We ain't in chains and running. You know what I'm saying? And white people ain't got their foot on our neck in this story. We ain't talking yeah. about. It. You know, because there was there was there was a t there were times where my grandmother and grandfather who you know worked hard wasn't really dealing with the the racial tension all the time because they was around all their own people. Mm -hmm. That's and true. They tried. You know, they worked hard. They did the thing. Family was first. That was important. They got dressed. They had cool little fly things. They did stuff. And we know what that was like. We know we have a social issues in this country and we've always had it that way but what is the other thing how do we continue to walk around with smiles on our faces and do things and um you know uh, uh over but you know over you know overcome all these boundaries and these these you know these pitfalls that we we have had set up for us and we want to tell those stories but the networks didn't want to get behind it straight up straight up and down they came up with every we've been working on this since 2003 so when okay. the opportunity for us to do an audio series was like, yo, this is great. We're still going to do it. So the first season um, came out in 2017, and we got, uh, since then, we've had over 20 million downloads of the series. Okay, so with that, do you yes. think because of the success of season oh, yes. one and you're going into season two, do you think networks would now be um, interested, yes. number one? And yes. is that an interest of, of all of you? Yes, the answer is yes on all of it. Um, okay. Part of one getting the, the 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 entertainment out and the story out to 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 the public, and there was an audience for us. There, there is an audience for it, and because how we have to do things in our industry, numbers speak volume. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So um, as we were working on season two. Um, that's why it's taking so long for us to, you know, drop this because because we um, we do have it set up. We have it set up with a studio and a network, so it will be ultimately a TV series. Yes, but right now, in the meantime, between time, we wanted to still give our listeners something really special. So season two is a continuation from season one. Season one had ten episodes. This season, we have a uh, six episode. We want to keep it sweet, short, concise, but really powerful, impactful, and it's strong. The performances are incredible. And when you listen to it, whether you're on your treadmill, you got 30 minutes and you want to listen to some great um, entertainment, our, our show is dope. It's, it's, the, it's the one to, to, to listen to. If you're driving to work, whether you're in your car or if you're on the train or the subway or on the bus or you're walking, or you're jogging, you're on it, whatever it is, you can listen to this and just get some really, really good entertainment. And as a result of this wonderful entertainment of this story, um, you're gonna get a little information. You're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna not only inspire, we're gonna, we're gonna be informative as well. So I think uh, this platform, I love the podcast podcast space. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna to do more in that that thing but we definitely going to make this is going to be a tv show for sure a, okay. TV show, a visual tv show. okay that's really exciting because you guys do not skip a beat in the audio series so i'm i can only imagine what you're going to bring to the actual uh, visual series when that yes. does come out is it going to be sort of a pickup of what you've done already with uh seasons one and two or is it going do you have a, an idea whether you're going to start all over and reintroduce everyone do you know well, about that? Without giving any spoilers away, I think that um, the TV series visual will be a standalone, but we will adopt the characters from the audio series. So my character, Jimmy, will still be, you know, coming in from the South uh, and, and sort of being the um, audience's eyes into this metropolis because when he gets to Bronzeville, as you listen to the audio series, when he gets to Bronzeville, coming out of the South, he's never seen a metropolis of just black businesses and things are booming and beauty and just black folks over here doing that thing, black folks, because he come from the South. And it's like, yeah. you know, they, you know, they 
running from folks, you know, trying not to get lynched. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Working hard and trying to make sure that, you know, uh, you know, this 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 evil stench of racism and white supremacy is is they're trying to escape that, you know? And so with yeah. the great generation, six million black folks came to 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 to, to the north. And um when he sees this wonderful way that black folks are living. He was like, this is, this is it. This is the American dream they've been selling us, but been keeping it away. But we had to get it ourselves. And so, um, yeah, so you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of that in the original uh, series, but like, you know, it's definitely going to have some, you know, we got to have some edge to it. So as you know, that, you know, when, when people try to come over and take over their businesses, you know, they pistol play just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got yeah. all that out. We're just trying to show, <laughs> you know, we're trying to show the other side. But it's a beautiful concept. It's a beautiful story. I'm just truly thankful that um, I'm a part of it and that we're able to um, share our stories. And, um, yeah, it's important. This is an important one. It is. I think uh, probably one of the more important pieces that you've uh, you've contributed to, as far as your art is concerned. Um, but speaking of your art and your and your you know your long list of of uh, projects that you've worked on, you know I think people really like when you flex, Lorenz, and it doesn't seem to be a part of your actual personality. I think you're more <laughs> chill, you know. So right. do you enjoy in times where, because even, even, you know, Jimmy Tillman in Bronzeville flexes, yeah. you know, he gets, he gets that, that on. Do you, is that something that you love to do? Like in your, uh, in your role as councilman Tate in power, I think people really take to that. Do you agree with that? Yeah. You know, I, I guess I am a little bit more reserved in real life. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to be in this business for a long time. And so, Anytime that I can, as you say, flex on them, it's always not. I think sometimes, you know, that's why folks, you know, what, there's a couple of reasons why people hire me, but I, I definitely think that fans or people who follow my work certainly want to uh, see me flex. And um, <laughs> I like it, you know what I'm saying? Because if, you know, I, don't, I don't do it all the time in my personal life. So it's nice to be able to find characters that I really can just, you know, wrap my mind around and just really just embody. Mm -hmm. And um, when I'm able to, you know, hit those highs and lows, it just, it's just nice. And yeah, so sure, I, I, I like to flex and Jimmy Tim definitely gonna be flexing on him, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> and Tika, you know, who is incredible as Lisa, um, they got a lot of cool stuff in season two together. So yeah, you know, we both gonna be flexing. A lot of, it's a lot of flexing this season. <laughs> okay. I enjoy doing that. Yeah. So you said that there are a couple reasons why people hire you. Now, I would agree. We all would agree. Your talent is, is you know, that's absolutely necessary for you to do some things. But why do you think that people are, are hiring you? Why you've sustained this long, uh, you know, journey in the acting business? Well, um, I think uh, I try to lead with integrity. I think that's, uh, you know, one of the things that people know that I'm, I will be able to deliver, you know, and I, I am, I pride myself in, you know, delivering the goods. Uh, and I don't necessarily believe I have a specialty. I think I can do a little bit of it all. And so I'm kind of, I'm, I can, I can be, in any space and um, any role, uh, a chameleon, if you will, in some cases. And so, uh, yeah, and underneath it, they're gonna find something that, like I said, I take everything that I do very seriously. So I wanna bring some kind of truth to a role, no matter the size of it. You know, you mentioned the power role. I, I started out on the first, uh, the, the season four, doing like two or three or four episodes and I would have one or two scenes each episode, but I wanted to make sure each scene that I was in, you know, I was able to deliver. I was able to give them this councilman Rashad Tate that they didn't know what was behind all of it, but they could kind of, <laughs> there was something not quite, you know, they weren't quite sure 
but the, but I wanted to bring a lot of that. And I, again, I think the integrity that um, I bring to just the art and you know work, my work, uh, mm -hmm. people people can count on me. Yeah, uh, and I, I agree with you on that. Do, is there anything that you can tell us about um, you know some of the spinoffs we've heard you know in the in the in the in the press i mean is there right. something you can tell us about what's going to happen with uh, councilman tate as far as power is concerned one of the power books mm. um <laughs> you know I, you know i want to i know i, I know Give me I something, I, Lorenz. <laughs> but, but i know is that you know obviously there's ghost um there's the canaan spinoff and there's uh uh, Force, the Tommy spinoff. So, you know, yes. Freak and Mary J, um, uh, Meth, uh, Michael Rainey Jr., you know, that, that the whole ghost uh, world. But we can, what I can tell you is that uh, Councilman Tate ain't dead. <laughs> okay. Not dead. <laughs> Just know that. Councilman he Tate dead. not dead. And um, he's very much so alive. Okay. Um, very alive. So who knows where, where you're going to see him pop up, if he pops up somewhere. And the moment that I know what's going to happen, y'all will know what's, what's happening. You so smooth. That was <laughs> You so smooth. You know, I like that. I like <laughs> Dig it. You dig it. Yeah, you dig no, it. I got you. I, I totally got you. Uh, shout out to Courtney Kemp, who's doing a fantastic job with power yeah. and everything that, you know, that all of the spinoffs. Fantastic Courtney. job. Courtney, I, I love her so, so much. She's incredible. Such a wonderful talent, but her heart and just, you know, the way she elevates everything and people around her, um, along with uh, 50. You know, I got to say that 50 Cent, man, is really, really a smart brother. Um, you know, I've, I've known him for, you know, the, the time that I've worked with the power and before I got on power, but over the years, really getting a chance to know him. And on a business level, man, this brother, I sit and chop it up with the bro. And I'm like, wow, this dude's got to figure it out. You know, I, so, I, I'm not able to tell all this, all of his, you know, his strategies and whatever it is, but I got to say, you know, I tip my hat off to five, you know what I'm saying? He, um, he's a smart, smart um, businessman. He really is. Yeah, we and we've known just from uh, other people talking about Fifty how brilliant he is and um and what he's done outside of acting outside of music as an executive in his yeah. business mind. Fifty or anyone else, can you talk about any of the um, lessons that you've taken away from him or anyone else that's just helped you propel in your own life? Well, I any positive. Uh, energy or or any informative uh, situations that I can take from uh, I do whether it's from 50 mm -hmm. from um, Courtney Kemp whether it's from my dear friend Omari Hartwick who played the incredible ghost um, I I'm always listening I'm a, I'm a student uh, of life so people I mentioned you know Quincy Jones, you know, working with Jamie Foxx. Um, but there's a lot of people that we may not know that are recognizable to the world that are behind the scenes that I'm able to listen to and to, to, to gather information and find ways that I can take certain things to add into my strategies or my plans or whatever my, my agendas are. And so uh, I, I'm always a student of 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 life, and so wherever the you know, I don't. It, it, sometimes for me, it doesn't really matter who the messenger is. You know, what I'm saying if mm -hmm. Creator has aligned me, and the universe has aligned me to cross paths or coming. I feel like I can you know take something from people, and then whatever I'm able to offer, you know, they can take it or or leave it. So mm -hmm. um, just being a student of life. So there's a lot of different things, um, and for me. What I can say that I take from most of my experiences is how does this fit into the longevity um, of, of things for myself? Because I'm not running the, the sprint, it's the marathon. How does the things that I learn and gather from those who I come in contact with, how does that work in 
for me over a long the long the long haul and that's that's what i sort of take away from it okay and and speaking of longevity um we already know that you've you've got a lengthy career that you've done very well for yourself as far as just i feel like you're an icon in the sense that you've stayed with our our life you know you stayed in the culture with us throughout this entire time and you've always given us something powerful um a couple of questions do you have a favorite character that you've played in any of your projects and then also stemming from that where do you plan to go with this do you want to continue acting and take that as long as you can or where do you want to branch off um those are very good questions uh the short answer for the first question it's kind of hard to say what is my favorite character because i've had quite a few yeah. um you know, I, you know, and I and I think some of my favorite characters are some of you, you all's favorite characters. Whether it's you know Old Dog and Menace, whether it's you know uh, Anthony Curtis in in Dead Presidents, or Darius Love Hall and Love Jones, or Frankie yeah. Lyon in White of Fools Fall in Love. I've been able to have some really cool things. Councilman Tate, you know, in the Power Universe. Uh, I've been really fortunate. Jimmy Tillman in Bronzeville. It's really been a great thing for me and you know I there's a special uh place for all of those characters that I've played um in my heart so uh certainly um they they all sort of stay with me and live with me uh what what can I say about you know the, the next chapters of my life and going back to that longevity the marathon um part of that is what we're doing right now uh you know telling our stories. I want to continue to tell our stories, whether it's funneled through me or other people who are experts at storytelling, actors, producers, directors. I just want to be able to continue to tell our stories and uplift our people as much as I possibly can. It's not about alienating any other group or communities, but my focus is our people that's what it is and 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 I'm, I'm i'm loving on us and i love us and i'm unapologetically loving on us and i'm i love it <laughs> yes. us, that, that, that diaspora and it goes beyond just black experiences here in america black experiences all over the world um through our diaspora so for me you know directing is is something down the road you know i you know i dabble in directing um i was able to help uh, be a part of directing the this audio series. I've directed, you know, music videos and, and commercials and stuff like that. But, you know, um, I, I have my eyes, you know, set on some feature films down the road, continuously producing along with my, my partners, LaRonna Lamar and Tateman Entertainment. And just being able to just do as much as I possibly can, you know, to, to elevate. So those are the next chapters, just continuously telling stories and creating businesses from there i think that's a that's a big part of it you know creating businesses and pathways for other artists and other you know people to be feel inspired and to want to do this but also get on the business side of it like the other side is great all of us want to be in front of it the camera and that's yeah. beautiful that's cool yeah. but we need ownership we need at least a, a, a seat at the table in a real way to make decisions we need to have decision makers in there so the next person or group of uh, us who comes into a room and wants to tell a story that is quality about us that we would understand it and wouldn't have to go through all the numbers and all the stuff because they don't always do that with other stories you don't have to show numbers you don't have to show and improve like we have to go and do you know so we like-minded people in the rooms to help make those decisions and i want yeah. i want part of that Okay. I love that. And and I think that, I mean, it makes so much sense for you and your journey and where you're going. And I love that you love us. You love your people. And obviously your people love you. Um, we are very much fans of your work and just will continue to watch you, support you and all that you do. But I know these people are going to be so upset if I just don't ask you one time for the one time. Lorenz, what, what's up with the skincare routine? How do you, how do you keep it so young? Because you don't grow. You don't age. <laughs> you, you, you don't age. That's the right word. Your skin but is I, beautiful. Tell well, us what you're doing. I appreciate that, y'all. I I love that. I love that. Um, no, honestly, moms and pops, I, it's genetic. I've been blessed. <laughs> and also, you know, trying to again pace myself in, in a lot in my life. I try not to live a, the crazy, the life that that would cause 
you know, most of us to sort of age a little uh, rapidly. I watch, you know, uh, health and wellness is really big for me. Mm. And I'm like, yo, I can go this way or I can go that way. I say, I'm going to go the right way. I'm going to just try to do whatever I can um, to just try to live a, a, a healthy uh, life as much as I possibly can, depending, you know, all the, you know, from meditating to what I eat, spiritually being, you know, connected, um, and just trying to have a balance in my life. And as a result of it, um, I think it just preserves, it preserves everything, you know what I mean? Just a well-rounded everything, you know, and, uh, allows you to, you know, do that. And I have some uh, incredible family and support, and my kids, my little ones keep me, my children keep me, me uh, young. You know, I have four sons, man, and, I got. I can't be. I can't be the old dude in the crib. You know. And <laughs> I got four sons. I got to keep up with these. And you know. That's so, right. Yeah. So it's blessed. My wife and I are are, are truly blessed to, to do that, and um, they keep me young. Yeah, you have a beautiful, beautiful family. Um, yeah. So shout out to them. Listen, Lorenz, we will definitely stay tuned for season two, and that's airing. Uh, Mar that's dropping March sixteenth. Yes. On March all platforms. On all platforms, wherever y'all listen to podcasts. Please listen to Bronzeville season two. You can also listen to season one to kind of, you know, get you on board on what's happening. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your platform. Continue to communicate. Continue to, you know, do what you all are doing over there. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and honored to be on, on, on your, your, your show right now and, and on your live. And, you know, nothing but love. Be some blessings to you Absolutely. and all your viewers. We appreciate you so much, Lorenz. Um, stay well, stay healthy, and safe out there, okay? I appreciate you, Queen. Thank you so much. All right, much. take care. Bless.